Good morning, and welcome to Morning Prayer with St. James Cathedral in Toronto. My name is Claire, I'm the Assistant Curate here, and this morning we will be praying um, out of the Book of Alternative Services, and we will begin on page 47. So, let's pray. Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. The Lord is our light and our life. O come, let us worship. Let's say the Jubilate together on page 49. Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with a song. Know this, the Lord himself is God. He himself has made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving, go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and call upon his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his faithfulness endures from age to age. The Lord is our light and our life. O come, let us worship. The Psalms appointed for this morning are Psalms 121, 122, and 123. So we will read them one after another, and then um, we'll finish with the Gloria Patri, the glory be to the Father. Um, at the end of Psalm 123, beginning with Psalm 121 on page 882. I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where is my help to come? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot be moved, and he who watches over you will not fall asleep. Behold, he who keeps watch over Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord himself watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand, so that the sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve you from all evil. It is he who shall keep you safe. The Lord shall watch over your going out and your coming in from this time forth forevermore. Psalm 122. I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Now our feet are standing within your gates, O Jerusalem. Jerusalem is built as a city that is at unity with itself, to which the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord, the assembly of Israel, to praise the name of the Lord. For there are the thrones of judgment, the thrones of the house of David. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May they prosper who love you. Peace be within your walls and quietness within your towers. For my brethren and companions' sake, I pray for your prosperity. Because of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek to do you good. Psalm 123. To you I lift up my eyes, to you enthroned in the heavens. As the eyes of servants look to the hand of their masters, and the eyes of a maid to the hands of hand of her mistress, so our eyes look to the Lord our God, until he show us his mercy. Have mercy upon us, O Lord, have mercy, for we have had more than enough of contempt, too much of the scorn of the indolent rich, and of the derision of the proud. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The first reading this morning is from 2 Samuel, chapter 18, verses 9 through 18. Absalom happened to meet the servants of David. Absalom was riding on his mule, and the mule went under the thick branches of a great oak. His head caught fast in the oak, and he was left hanging between heaven and earth, while the mule was under him that was under him went on. A man saw it and told Joab, I saw Absalom hanging in an oak. 
Joab said to the man who told him, What? You saw him? Why then did you not strike him there to the ground? I would have been glad to give you ten pieces of silver and a belt. But the man said to Joab, Even if I felt in my hand the weight of a thousand pieces of silver, I would not raise my hand against the king's son. For in our hearing, the king commanded you and Abishai and Etai, saying, For my sake, protect the young man Absalom. On the other hand, if I had dealt treacherously against his life, and there is nothing hidden from the king, then you yourself would have stood aloof. Joab said, I will not waste time like this with you. He took three spears in his hand and thrust them into the heart of Absalom while he was still alive in the oak. And ten young men, Joab's armor bearers, surrounded Absalom and struck him and killed him. Then Joab sounded the trumpet and the troops came back from pursuing Israel, for Joab restrained the troops. They took Absalom, threw him into a great pit in the forest, and raised over him a very great heap of stones. Meanwhile, all the Israelites fled to their homes. Now Absalom in his lifetime had taken and set up for himself a pillar that is in the king's valley, for he said, I have no son to keep my name in remembrance. He called the pillar by his own name. It is called Absalom's Monument to this day. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> we'll respond. We'll respond with the souls of the righteous, the canticle number 10, which is on page 80 of the BAS. The souls of the righteous are in the hand of God. No torment shall ever touch them. In the eyes of the unwise, they seem to be dead. Their departure was taken for defeat. They're going from us to be disaster, but they are in peace. Though they appeared to be punished, their hope is rich in immortality. Small their affliction, great their blessing. God proved and found them worthy of himself. Like gold in a furnace, he tried them and accepted them as an oblation. In the moment of God's coming, they shall kindle into flame and run like sparks through the stubble. They shall govern nations and peoples, and the Lord shall be their ruler forever. The second lesson is from the book of Acts. Chapter 23, verses 12 to 24. In the morning, the Jews joined in a conspiracy and bound themselves by an oath, neither to eat nor drink until they had killed Paul. There were more than 40 who joined in this conspiracy. They went to the chief priests and elders and said, we have strictly bound ourselves by an oath to taste no food until we have killed Paul. Now then, you and the council must notify the tri tribune to bring him down to you on the pretext that you want to make a more thorough examination of his case. And we are ready to do away with him before he arrives. Now the son of Paul's sister heard about the ambush. So he went and gained entrance to the barracks and told Paul. Paul called one of the centurions and said, take this young man to the tribune, for he has something to report to him. So he took him, brought him to the tribune, and said, The prisoner Paul called me and asked me to bring this young man to you. He has something to tell you. The tribune took him by the hand, drew him aside privately, and asked, What is it that you have to report to me? He answered, The Jews have agreed to ask you to bring Paul down to the council tomorrow, as though they were going to inquire more thoroughly into his case. But do not be persuaded by them, for more than forty of their men are lying in ambush for him. They have bound themselves by an oath neither to eat nor drink until they kill him. They are ready now and are waiting for your consent. So the tribune dismissed the young man, ordering him, tell no one that you had informed me of this. Then he summoned two of the centurions and said, get ready to leave by nine o'clock tonight for Caesarea with 200 soldiers, 70 horsemen, and 200 spearmen. Also provide mounts for Paul to ride and take him safely to Felix, the governor. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Turning 
now to page 52. Let's say together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Now, as we offer our own intercessions and thanksgivings, we pray for our own community. Naming those on our hearts, all those in leadership, those who are in trouble. and the church around the world for Christians who are persecuted for their faith. And for the witness of the church. For those in positions of political power and authority that they would administer justice and do what is good. For all those around the world who suffer from natural or human caused disasters, those who are displaced, hungry, We pray for our own city of Toronto, especially those who are unhoused, those who are afraid, all those suffering from COVID-19, and those throughout the world who are still suffering. And we pray for those who have died, that they would rest in the peace of Christ. Heavenly Father, in you we live and move and have our being. We humbly pray you so to guide and govern us by your Holy Spirit, that in all the cares and occupations of our life we may not forget you, but may remember that we are ever walking in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, you have broken the tyranny of sin and sent into our hearts the spirit of your Son. Give us grace to dedicate our freedom to your service, that all people may know the glorious liberty of the children of God. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the God of peace enable us to do his will in every kind of goodness, working in us what pleases him through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory forever and ever. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you.